apologise for this. This hasn't come out too well. Uh, I've been I've, for the last year. I've, I've been uh, ensconced in Ludwigsburg, a place I've never been to uh, previously, in the uh, German archives, looking at the investigations the West German authorities did into help. And they did a fantastic job, in my view. The level of detail and information is absolutely incredible. Uh, certainly my German reading skills have been improved a lot uh, looking through all the testimonies because there are several thousand pages. <laughs> this is a map drawn by one member uh, of the Schuttpolizei who was in Kumhof, a guy called uh, Karl Heimel, who was investigated by the West Germans and gave uh, a lot of testimony. He drew this map of the palace camp. What we're looking at here, this is the palace. This is the granary called the Stahl, next door. This is the main road here, this is the entrance. These are the stairs into the palace. <coughs> we're going to talk about this in a minute, in a minute but the Jewish victims uh, went into the palace on the ground floor, undressed. They were then taken down naked into the basement and forced along a narrow path here in the basement into the gas van, which is backed up here. There's a ramp that had been built between the exit from the palace in the basement and the gas van. And they were forced through this narrow passage into the gas van. Again, it hasn't come out too great, but it's from a, a testimony I found in Austria. <coughs> this is a, a testimony by Fritz Isma, who was a member of SD. Uh, he was one of the senior members of the Zonda Commando. He was responsible for the valuables taken from the Jews and the victims <coughs> in Kumhof. He had a little office in the palace and he was responsible for taking all the, all the valuables. He is the most important witness from the German side, from the members of the Zonda Commando, in the uh, investigations done by the West German authorities. He provides fantastic testimony. I think. I haven't seen all the files, I probably won't get to see all the files, but I think uh, he has done, he has obviously come to some arrangement with the uh, German police to give testimony, detailed testimony on what's gone on and against other members of the commando in order that he is not put on trial. I think this is what happened because his testimony is so detailed and honest. Uh, I think this is what happened. But this is a drawing from him. And again, this is the, the, the palace area. Uh, and he describes uh, what happens on each floor. So, for example, the Polish Sonder Commander were kept in the attic of the palace. So the eight members of the Polish Sonder Commander lived in the attic of the, of the palace. Uh, Isma had an office there for uh, collecting and sorting valuables. This is the entrance today to the memorial site. And this is approximately where the entrance was to the death camp. So, iconic, you can see here, this is the Stahl, or the granary, on the right hand side. Obviously it's been refurbished since, <coughs> since the war, but this is, a, this is the building, this is the basics of the building. On the left hand side here is a, a, a tiny museum. Uh, this obviously wasn't there. Behind, uh, this small building is, is the remnants of the palace, the foundations of the palace, which we'll, we'll look at in a minute. <coughs> so we're talking about a relatively small area. On the left-hand side, literally here, is the church. So excavations were undertaken in Helmno in the 80s and 90s, and one of the things they excavated was the remnants of the palace. Because at the end of the first period of operation of Helmno, as part of getting rid of the evidence, the uh, Nazis blew up the palace altogether, flattened it. Uh, this is all that remains. These are the excavated uh, foundations of the basement. So, you see the stall uh, is at the top there. The entrance is over this way. What you can see here is the outline of the rooms of the basement, which is actually the most important area because in the basement lived the tailors, the Jewish tailors uh, and shoemakers 
they, they slept and lived here in, in cells, and the Jewish rabbis come out of also stayed here. <coughs> this, you can still see it, you'll have a better picture later, this is the corridor up which the Jews were driven into the back of the gas line. So where that tree stands is approximately where the gas line backed up. There was a ramp connecting it. And the Jews were forced up this corridor and into the back of the gas line. Again, that, I take thousands of photographs, but some I, I, I love. I love this photograph uh, because, uh, just iconic, this is the, the steps turned into the basement. This is the church behind. So this is the, this, the steps down which they went into the basement having undressed on the ground floor. This is a better photo. This is the corridor. This is the corridor in the basement. These are the Jews are being forced up here into the gas sun, which is backed up here. This is a very, very narrow corridor. You couldn't get more than one person at a time. Yeah? So, at any one time, the maximum capacity of, of the biggest gas van was 50 persons. So what they're doing, 50 persons at a time, they're naked, they're driven down to the basement, and they're driven up this path and into the back of the gas van, and they, they lock the back of the gas van. Uh, at any point in time, the maximum number of people coming to come off in a day would be 1,000. So the other Jews are waiting upstairs on the, on the ground floor, having undressed, or they're waiting in the uh, area in front of the palace. Or they're waiting in lorries outside, waiting to come in. So we have testimonies. Uh, at the entrance gate to the palace camp, there might be three, four lorries backed up, waiting to come into the camp. Again, this is the same corridor. Uh, it, w w it was thought, although we, we had some questions about it, that the gas van backed up here. But this is not possible because the space between the granary and the palace is not big enough to uh, back up an eight ton sour uh, gas van. So actually, Fritz Isma, fantastic testimony, he actually told us the gas van backed up this way and the ramp was in a rectangle. So actually, the gas van backs up here and the ramp is this way. So but the criticism of testimony, and this is why I wanted to show the, the drawing he made, is very important because nowhere else have we actually seen this documented. But it must be correct because there isn't space for the <coughs> gas van to, to back up directly uh, in front of the granary. The granary is also a very important building. Uh, this was part of the estate of the palace. There was an orchard and other agricultural activities. This is a f these are photos from 1945, again from Judge Bebash in his investigation. In the first period of operation of Kolmov, so that is December, November, December 41 through March, April 43, this was used as a storage facility. When the, uh, the Zonda Commando came back for the second period in 1944, there was no palace building. It had been blown up. So they needed to utilize other buildings. So they, they utilized the granary as a place for keeping the Jewish Arbeids Commando. Now the reason this building is destroyed in when Judge Bednash got there to do his investigation in 45 is not because the Nazis blew it up, but in January 45, they were clearing up the final remnants of the camp and there were a few Jewish Arbeids Commando left. So as the Germans were about to leave because the Russians were approaching, uh, they wanted to take the Jews out of the, the Jewish Arbeids Commander out of the granary and shoot them. But the Jewish Arbeids Commander had been there for a while, they knew what was coming and they refused to come out. So there was a firefight and two, uh, I think at least one SD Gestapo Schutzpolizei man went in to take them out and he was killed. There then ensued a firefight and the granary was burnt down, together with all the, uh, the Jewish victims uh, still existing in there. So this is why this building is destroyed. So again, this is a photograph from Judge Bednash. This shows the inside of the granary, and as you see, there's a lot of uh, material there, but there is also the remnants of some bodies. Okay. The palace area was also used 
for organizing and distributing the belongings of the Jews who had been brought to, uh, and other victims who had been brought to Kulmhof, death camp. The, these were sorted out. Uh, we have various testimonies in the first period. They used to throw, just throw the, the belongings out of the windows at the back and then they would be collected by the uh, uh, probably the Jewish uh, Arbeid's commando and sorted. In the second period there was no palace. We have testimony there was a big tent in front of where the palace used to be and this is where they organized and, and sorted the belongings. The, the, the uh, Nazis weren't interested in all the belongings of the victims. Some things were not useful for them. And these were buried in big pits uh, at the edge of the palace area. Again, as part of the excavations done in 2008-2009, a lot of these pits, pits were ex excavated and a lot of uh, useful, interesting material in terms of research was found that has added a lot to the knowledge of what happened in Kulhof. Uh, as you see here, we just have a few remnants of plates and other crockery, spoons and forks. Many of these were found in the pits. And very interesting, sewing machines. So they found uh, some of these sewing machines in the pits that had just been buried, thrown away. Probably these came from Lichtenstadt, you would imagine. But there are many excavated, uh, it's amazing uh, what, what the Nazis threw away and the, the evidence that's been created from the excavations. Uh, there are many, many things existing. And this is how they know, for example, this is the only reason they know, some Polish and Soviet prisoners of war were killed in Kumhof because they found a dog tags in the excavations. 